Hello dear friends, I want to upgrade my Lurge iX. I've printed already all the, the parts because I want to change the color and uh, maybe um, prove the stiffness. <clears throat> then you see I'm going to upgrade to the linear rails and the direct extruder. So I'm going to take it apart today all the way. So it's not only going to be the, the upgrade, uh, it's going to be assembling the whole thing again. And then also the direct extruder, as you see here, as the version that I have doesn't have the screw holes for the linear parts, I also got new frame parts. I will put the link under the video so you can see what parts it needs to do this process. And here's also a plate, a new one. I don't know if it's thicker, I will see. <clears throat> and some metal brackets instead of the acrylic ones. This has been a workforce when it uh, comes to printing with PET material, you know, the, the material that I create out of PET bottles. I will link a video underneath so you can see what the PET bot is. I create <coughs> filament, 3D printable filament out of PET bottles and so far no other printer was able to handle it. My uh, Prusa MK3 with the Revo system, it always got clogged and <coughs> yeah, so this one has been working really nicely. Although it doesn't have a direct extruder, I don't know why it does it so nicely, but it does it. And yeah, so it's, it's a really enjoyable printer. I love that I can take it with me everywhere I go. Uh, but in the future, I want to build a protective box. So uh, it is not, so you cannot bump uh, into things with this uh, rail here. And um, yeah, this is the only thing that you have to take care really about uh, when you're carrying it with you. But so for, but never the other things, yeah, it does really nicely. The print quality is really good. I've printed all the parts for its own upgrade on it. And yeah, uh, recently I also got a new texture plate. You know, when I ordered the other parts and I made the screen, you know, the screen here, I used it there. I don't know if you can see it in the, and on, this, on your screen now, but it's too far away. <clears throat> so, okay, this is going to be a, a time lapse, disassembling it and then assembling it again. Okay, see you. These are the belt holders for the Y axis. As you see, they're totally deformed. So I decided to print the new ones, uh, the thicker version that I downloaded from printables. Okay, as you can see, I'm finished now. I disassembled everything, already laid out all the parts for the upgrade, and in the next step, I will assemble everything again. What I have recognized, though, I'll keep it now temporary as it is, but I guess I need a, a replacement. The Z lead screw nut seems to be worn out because as you can see it uh, is it is moving slightly i tried to unscrew it downwards but it got binded up down here and uh, then i unscrewed it through the top and maybe th that caused it i'm not quite sure but uh, i don't want to leave it uh, like that Okay, it's normal. I think it has to have a play, but it is not normal that it is slightly moving up and down. Yeah, 
<clears throat> okay, but uh, I think that can be exchanged quickly. So I'll keep it temporary like it is. I'm gonna reach out to Megan to find out if she can send it one to me because I cannot find one in the shop. There is a, something that looks similar to that nut, but it is round and I need uh, one that fits here in the in this part. Yeah, it's somewhere here in the pile. Yeah. I will I will see tomorrow when I when I assemble everything back. Yeah, so I guess the geometry has to be the same. And uh, yeah, I'm wondering why this is not available as a replacement part because I can imagine that after a while others might also have the same problem. Okay, so next part will be the assembly. This is how far I got today. I assembled the linear rails and the base structure. It has been working well. There are only two things that uh, yeah, drove me nuts. You know, you have these rubber thingies here that you put on the ends of the linear rails that the that this cannot fall off but you know when you're working on it yeah, then the mass is quite high and if you don't take care the rubber thingy will get knocked out and then the whole thing slides off it happened to me luckily i have a tablecloth uh, this is quite an advantage if you're working with tiny parts they cannot uh, fall off the table they get caught in the cloth so that is really a good thing it doesn't look so fancy but uh, I don't care but luckily you know I've been working with linear rails uh, before and I maintained them I took out uh, the balls of uh, linear rail set that I have on other printer and even exchanged the balls uh, so it wasn't that hard to get it back together and luckily the balls only fell out of the one uh, out of one side uh, yeah, I'm not gonna go further today I feel quite uh, sick still and I'm taking my time you know I'm not rushing any, anything and uh, yeah as I have had now a mixture between the build version 3 the the assembly guide of the linear rails and the assembly guide of the the direct drive it's quite a mixture so i wish there would be a, a new instruction for use one one for those that do the entire upgrade you know and one that uh, do either of those uh, now you have to just work parallel on three instructions <clears throat> And it could be a little bit confusing. Uh, okay, but uh, so far everything's nice. One screw got knocked out. You know, I've been using the screws that I already had from the initial build because uh, when I had it, when I bought it, um, everything was still stuck. And I've been working with uh, with it now for over one year, where everything was fine. But I wanted to see what the upgrades uh, yeah, can do. And this is why I exchange everything. So this screw here got knocked out. I couldn't turn it in anymore. But luckily, uh, there's a hack, you know. I don't have another screw of that kind. And what will do the job until you buy a new one is uh, 
to use one of these Phillips screwdrivers. I have a set of those quite handy so if you use the the Allen key it will it will not catch the, the, the screw anymore it turns around but this one here this will still work so just a little trick yeah um, I took apart everything as you can see because I'm also exchanging those 3d printed parts and yeah uh, and the other thing that I didn't like is that the you know the part cooling fan you know the fan duct here uh, it is bending the heat cartridge over so much that uh, yeah I'm a little bit worried and there should be a little bit more space here in this area a tiny bit you know so that it doesn't get bent so so strong um, the wires are a little bit exposed. I hope that nothing will happen there. Yeah, uh, I will stop now today for today uh, because I feel quite sick. And then I will continue tomorrow. Or I don't know. Let me see how I feel tomorrow after work. Today I had a day off, so yeah. But uh, yeah, still a lot of work to do and can't wait to see it printing. I decided to apply this uh, touch sensor I wanted to give it a try to see how good it works. And here you see how um, you're using it. So you see here, this is the icon that you have to, to use. And then it will touch 16 points. Normally you do that with a piece of paper. Once you're finished, you can put back the sock. You see, I. I cut it a little bit so you don't uh, have a problem putting it back on again. I'll just raise the set axis manually. And then afterwards you just pop it on. And by, by having applied this cut, you see it's very easy to put back and it stays there, it doesn't fall off. So don't worry. This is how I store the cable of the touch probe. I just tuck it in like that and it stays there. These are the first print results. And here I'm printing a vase. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the video. So see you in the next one. Ciao.